Good morning, guys. I'm a little out of breath because I've just been digging holes in the front yard. And it is hot outside. I'm wearing shorts and long sleeves because my arms are tanned and my legs and I need to fix that. <laughs> but I know in my last video I said I would be sowing, direct sowing some seeds in the garden. I'm actually not gonna do that today. So we have a high wind warning from like 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. 60 mile per hour gusts, it's whatever, it happens all the time. <laughs> but direct seeding vegetable crops or really any seeds in the desert is extremely difficult because the top layer of soil dries out very quickly. And then on this super windy day, I'm probably gonna get a lot of my mulch blown out of the garden as well, which will just make all of my seeding a moot point. So I'm not gonna bother with it today. I'll wait until a calmer day to do that. But I am going to be planting some seeds that I sowed in the front yard garden. So if y'all were with me when I direct sowed my squash and root sensitive crops in my soil blocks, I told you that I was going to sow some in pots as well. And these are them. But what I did differently with these was I used a mixture of potting soil and sand from like my actual desert sand that I have outside. And I did that for one particular reason. So it's hard enough for a little plant who's grown in a perfect environment, indoors with lights, you know, no wind like the wind that we have here or no heat with the UV rays that we have in the desert. It's hard enough for them to transition from indoors outside to my garden, but it is even harder <laughs> to have them transition from growing up in excellent potting soil with fertilizer to the dirt that I have outside. So I'm trying something new this year. I have not tried it before, although it makes complete and total sense, which I don't, I don't even know why I never did this before. But I just mixed half and half potting soil and sand to acclimate these plants' roots to the completely depleted desert soil that I have in my in-ground garden and in my front yard. And I also sowed just a ton of squash seeds. So what I'm gonna do today is plant some heat tolerant squash varieties and I think I have I have some watermelon and okra here. I did have amaranth but but they don't look the greatest. <laughs> so I'm not sure these are gonna go in the garden. But I am gonna put these seedlings, at least a couple of them, in the front yard garden um, to not only build soil but to also provide cover for the ground and then at the end of the year, if they grow, I can just basically chop and drop, create more mulch and organic matter for my front yard garden. Now I did plant, I think, two squashes and a watermelon in my front yard landscaping last year and they did okay, the squash didn't survive, but I had a really bad squash bug problem last year after we went on vacation and, and they just weren't taken care of. But the watermelon survived and actually gave me one little tiny watermelon. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that is a reoccurring trend and plants are able to grow in my front yard landscaping because I just don't really wanna spend the money to buy a ton of xeriscape plants to put in my front yard landscaping this year. And so why not grow food there? I've also learned over the past three couple years, three couple years, I've also learned over the past couple years that I much prefer to grow food that will sustain this homestead than a ton of ornamental plants. Not that I don't like ornamental plants. I love flowers, I love a pretty garden, I, I want beautiful front yard landscaping. But I also want edible landscaping. And so I'm trying to develop my soil in the front yard landscaping slowly but surely and we're just gonna test it out and see how it works. And I'm not just gonna plant these potted plants, I'm, I'm going to have extra soil blocks by the time I'm done planting out the garden. So I'm sure the extras I will throw in the front yard just because I wanna throw plants wherever they could possibly grow and just get more and more food. <laughs> it doesn't, your food production does not ever have to be just relegated to a garden unless aesthetically you prefer that, which is completely fine. I prefer to just have food growing everywhere and I want to cultivate a landscape that allows for that. So what I have here are an art comb watermelon. 
Traumancino squash, birdhouse gourds, blue Hubbard squash, uh, plain old yellow squash, the Desert King watermelon, Seminole squash, uh, cornucopia gourds, and okra. And then my amaranth didn't come up, and neither of my loofahs that I planted, the seeds I planted came up, which is interesting because I didn't have success with loofah last year either. And I'm not sure why. I really, really want to grow my own loofahs. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> um, so some of these are going to be going in the garden today. I've already dug the holes. That's why I look sunburned and out of breath. It's just hot outside. So let's get to it. When I bought this home three years ago, this area was basically all desert sand and just fill dirt left over from the construction of the home. So I added all these wood chips and some minor amendments. I did cultivate this area before I put the wood chips over it. I added a little bit of compost, but it is a very large area to amend. So most of this is just original sand. And as you can see, my home is on an elevation, so it is kind of difficult to water when all the water runs downhill from the house. And this front yard landscaping is east facing. So this area receives full sun on the south side for most of the day, but the rest of this front yard gets partial sun as the sun moves behind my house. Now, despite putting all these wood chips down, um, it's really only as a soil protectant, a soil covering, we don't get enough rain here between 8 and 10 inches a year to actually break these wood chips down. So the only way these wood chips break down is where I have plants and they're watered continuously throughout the year and then by obviously manual degradation. So walking on here, the dogs walk in here all the time. So this is nice, but it doesn't really add anything to my soil except over the very, very long term because I'm not going to take a sprinkler and waste water and just water mulch so that it breaks down quickly and adds to my soil. Unfortunately, that's not feasible for me, nor do I wanna be wasting water like that. So unfortunately, I don't have very many soil amendments here. The varieties that I'm choosing to grow here are hardy and have performed for me in the past. Some of them, others I've heard are hardy, so I'm just trying them out. Uh, the Seminole Pumpkin is one that I've heard is pretty hardy and I'm hoping it does well. I have grown the Desert King watermelon several times. It is an excellent desert variety of watermelon. And of course, okra does great here. I love okra. It grows almost anywhere here and it does very, very well in the heat. It loves the heat. But again, all of this is an experiment and an attempt to grow food wherever I can on this property, along with gradually making the soil better as these plants roots break down once they're dead over time and I just continually add organic matter to this sand. <laughs> now from past experience I do know that the front of my house I'm on a higher elevation here than my garden. In fact the location I put my garden is actually a really poor choice because it's the lowest part of my property and since cold air sinks it's usually about 10 degrees colder than the front of my property. So even though I'm not sure we've had our last frost yet here on this homestead, I do know that most likely it will not freeze up by the house, not to mention the warmth that comes off of the house at night, etc., etc. So I'm not too worried about planting these squash out, even though it's not quite time for me to be planting all of my other garden vegetables out. Uh, but even if they do, even if they do die, I have so, so many plants that I am moderately okay with losing a few. And I'm not gonna be planting all of these out today. I'm just throwing a few out because honestly, I just really wanna plant things. <laughs> so I just put a little trombancino squash here, which is kind of a vining squash and it can be trellised. So I'm hoping if it makes it, that um, I might be able, be able to have a trellis here in the front of the house, in front of the windows, and it will be very cool. So we'll see. This might be a complete failure, who knows. And this hole is actually very close to where I had the watermelon that actually produced one last year. So I'm hoping I'm gonna put another watermelon here and maybe the good luck trend will continue. And I'm gonna take one of these art comb watermelons. Uh, if you've seen my seeds I'm starting video, I'll link it somewhere. 
These were actually found in New Mexico, so they're a native New Mexico breed, which means they should be pretty heat tolerant, preferably have like alkaline soils. I'm not real sure about the soil preference, but that's what's gonna go in this watermelon hole right here. <laughs> I need some fertilizer. So don't do what I do and transplant your seedlings in the middle of the day. You really, and it's not the middle of the day, it's like 10 a.m., but you really should try and transplant your seedlings either, well, preferably in the evening so that they have all night to acclimate to their new surroundings without getting the brunt of the heat and the sun. But I'm creating a little well for these guys in the wood chips. And like I said before, these, these plants will not get the full brunt of the sun all day because of the shade of the house. So they're so small, they're so low, the wind isn't gonna really affect them, the wind that we have scheduled for today. And they won't be beaten down by the sun for too long. And it, they're hardened off, so the sun shouldn't be an issue anyways. You just kinda wanna give them the best chance and plant them at night. I did not get around to planting anything last night because we had a friend over, so today is when it's happening. <laughs> and sometimes that's just how life works. Pro tip. Label your seedlings. So let me show you guys something. Some of these squash plants grew faster than the others. Um, three out of the four that I planted were good. Their roots hadn't reached the bottom of the container. There wasn't too much disturbance. But this Hubbard squash, <laughs> the one I just planted in the garden, uh, was is very large and had extensive roots and was a little root bound. I'm expecting this to be the same way and that is not good. So I don't want to squish this pot too much. Like I said, the roots don't like to be disturbed. And that's why most of the squash that I planted were in the soil blocks, except for these. Because if I put sand in the soil blocks, they won't stay together. So I can't do the half mixture of sand and soil like I did in these pots with soil blocks where they'll just fall apart. So I just kind of, oh yeah, this is bad. So this is a good healthy root system, uh, but pr pretty root bound for a squash and squash do not like to be root bound or their roots messed with or really transplanting at all. So this is not ideal for transplanting, um, but I can't let this guy go in the pot any longer. So I'm just gonna put him in the yard and if he dies, he dies. <laughs> I'll just have to keep that in mind next time that uh, this variety of squash grows extremely quickly and probably needs to be planted sooner than this. But we'll see how he does. Now I only planted five squash in the front and they've been watered in, frankly because I can only handle so much disappointment. <laughs> um, and I, like I said before, I will also be direct seeding squash seeds in the garden just in case the soil blocks don't work out because this is my first time using them this year. And I, I, I have extreme anxiety. I'm a very anxious person. And so I just like to have all my bases covered. I like to have lots of redundancies. So we're gonna test these out for a few days, see how they handled the transplant, how they're handling the weather and the soil, and then go from there. I probably will be throwing some things in the garden pretty soon beyond just the direct seeding that I'm going to do for my beans and my cucumbers and such. Uh, but I'll probably be throwing actual plants that I have in there. Um, I did do the two tomatoes I told you guys about and they're gone <laughs> because it did freeze. But we have nothing stating frost in the 10 day forecast and it's getting hot. It's like 
almost 80 degrees right now and I am sweltering out there. So surely, surely it won't freeze again. <laughs> I just want this stuff to go. I want to stop carrying 10 trays inside every night. I want to start growing food. I just, I want to plant my garden. So I'm doing these experiments for me and for you guys. And I actually, I can show you something. So I did plant two flowering plants. They're called a Mexican something flower. If I find a picture, I'll put it up here. But I did put these in the garden about a week ago and they are, and they are not frost hardy. So I know it has not frozen up here in the front yard. This is also catnip that I grew last year and it came back. So both of these things give me confidence that the soil is at least okay and that it's not going to freeze because I planted these before I planted the tomatoes in my garden and it froze in the garden, but apparently it did not freeze up here. So that gives me some confidence in planting up here. What doesn't give me confidence is how root bound that blue hubbard squash was. So we'll see. I'm okay with it. And I'm excited to see if I have trailing squash plants all over this front yard this year. That would be so cool. All right guys, it's hot. I'm gonna go inside. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you on the next one.